Hey everybody, one that was bored and never boring, and another video in this series which I call, for want of a better name, On the Hobby Table. These videos basically serve two purposes. First of all, they give me an opportunity to talk about the channel and other things that I want to mention, but also because I need to have something going on in the background while I'm talking, they serve as a dumping ground for little bits of footage that I have shot relating to hobby gaming, which I don't necessarily feel are interesting enough to get their own video, but which might be of interest to someone. So I can chuck them here while I'm chatting about other stuff. So in this video, what I've done is I've thrown together a couple of bits of footage relating to different elements of terrain that I am creating for Rangers of Shadowdeep, which as many of my subscribers will know, is one of my favorite games. So you can see here in the background, I actually have some terrain elements which are from the Hobbit starter set from Games Workshop, which is possibly the most unlimited limited edition that any company has ever released. It contained a load of miniatures and terrain to recreate the escape from the goblin town from the first Hobbit film. So you get some of these walkways made out of bits of wood and doors and things, and then you get a couple of platforms as well. They do a really good job of creating that scene from the movie with all of the different gangways that the dwarves are fighting over with the goblins. But I felt that using two of those gangways was a really good way of creating a bridge for Rangers of Shadowdeep for a scenario which I recently showed on the channel. And that's also good because it lets me get some use out of this box because aside from playing around a little bit with the rules, I've never really done much with the Hobbit game or with the Middle Earth strategy battle game. From what I've done with it, I do actually really enjoy it and I keep saying that I need to pick up the new starter set with the Riders of Rohan and the uh, Forces of Mordor. I think that would be a really good way to get into the game with forces that I'm more interested in because as much as I like the Hobbit films, I don't have as much love for the dwarves and the goblins from those movies. So I think at some point I will pick it up. I keep saying I will, but it keeps getting pushed to the back of the queue by other things that I'm more interested in at the time. I suspect what will happen at some point is Games Workshop will discontinue that starter set and I will frantically grab a box before it goes out of production. But anyway, I am getting some use out of this Hobbit set. Obviously, as well as using the terrain, anybody who watched my Rangers of Shadowdeep video, which I posted the other week, will notice that I use some goblins from the set. They are really nice miniatures, and I do tend to use them in Dungeons & Dragons as well. As you can see in the background here, I am coating the whole terrain piece with Mornfang Brown. I've sprayed it with Chaos Black. I tend to spray most of my stuff either with Chaos Black or Corax White, depending on what I'm doing. And I will put two coats of Mornfang Brown over this. Mornfang Brown doesn't cover very well, but with two coats, you do get a really nice, rich brown finish. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, um, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, all that sort of stuff. So I guess that's something that I would like to do at some point. Something else I would like to do, and something which is far more pressing, is say thank you to all of my subscribers and anybody who has come to the channel, watched the video, pressed the like button, shared it, left a comment for me, all that good stuff. It's unbelievable, but the channel is now at almost 4,750 subscribers, which is absolutely huge. And really, I'm dealing with numbers now which are far beyond what I ever really thought I was going to get for this channel. And it's so exciting for me to see the channel grow, to see more people coming in, leaving comments, talking about hobby gaming, talking about board games, talking about miniatures. It's so cool. And I really am very grateful for everybody who lends their support in whatever way that is, whether that's subscribing or just liking or whatever. And of course, I should say at this point, if you are watching this video and you aren't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It really is a massive help to me. And of course, as much as I'm delighted with the numbers that I have for the channel now, it would be fantastic to keep on growing, to keep on going. I want to keep on doing this. I'm having so much fun making this channel. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying all the conversations in the comments. I'm really enjoying hearing other people's views on what they're getting up to. And I just want to keep on doing this, really. Of course, I think a lot of the people who have come into the channel recently have come in because I've been covering Cursed City, the forthcoming game from Games Workshop, and that is, of course, something that I'm really excited about. However, I get the sense that Cursed City has been pushed back a little bit in the schedule. I suspect that is 
a delay that Games Workshop weren't expecting, which is why we've had so much coverage on a game that is not yet out for pre-order and still isn't out for pre-order at the point that I'm putting this video together. But as they are releasing interesting new bits of information, I am covering it on the channel. You may have noticed that I haven't covered everything recently. I think some of the updates that they've released have been treading water. I'm quite tired of them just showing a miniature and then making a couple of silly jokes about the miniature. What I really want them to be showing are game mechanisms. I have no idea why when they are showcasing a hero or an enemy, they don't also show the character card for that miniature. It would be really interesting when they showcase a hero to say, and here is the hero's character card. Here are the hero's abilities. This is how this particular hero will fight in the game. They aren't really doing any of that. And it's a little bit humdrum and it doesn't give me much to talk about on the channel with it. So I'm tending to only post a video when something really interesting is announced or something a little bit different to what they have been showing. But if people would like me to cover every time they do an update, even if it's not got a lot of new information, do please let me know in the comments. If people are interested in seeing those videos, I will make them. But I do feel a little bit like they're not the most interesting videos and I don't want to annoy people by going, oh, here's another update where I show you a picture of a miniature you've already seen and then read a couple of lines of not particularly interesting fluff text. By the way, in the background, you can see I am now putting Screaming Skull over all of the bones on this particular piece. And what I'm doing here is trying to do the quickest, easiest job possible. I don't like painting terrain. Terrain is great to have. I think terrain is generally the other player on the board. It adds so much interest and life to any tabletop game, but it can be a little bit of a chore to paint. I used to run a series on the channel called 10 Paints or Less where I would obviously try to paint things using 10 Paints or Less and this bridge is definitely something that could have been on that series. Besides the two coats of Mournfang, I'm going to put some Screaming Skull on the bone, I'll put some Xandru Dust on the little bits of rope, I will put some Lead Belcher on the metal and then the whole thing will get an Agrax Earthshade wash and then a quick dry brush over the wood to finish it and that will be the whole piece done. I'm not worried about doing extra highlighting on the bones and the ropes and the extra little bits of debris. I just don't think it's necessary. I think there are much better things that I could spend my painting time on. With the little details done, I'm going to use Strong Tone from Army Painter to do the shading. And there are two reasons why I'm using Army Painter Strong Tone. The first is it comes in a bottle so you can actually squeeze it straight onto the miniature. And because the whole thing is getting a coat, this just speeds up the whole process. You can apply some directly to the miniature and then just use a big brush to slosh it around into the gaps. The second reason is these are pretty large terrain elements, which means you need quite a lot of wash and Army Painter washes are considerably cheaper than Games Workshop washes. So generally when I am painting terrain, I will use more Army Painter paints or even cheap hobby paints just to get colors on the miniatures without having to use my really expensive paints. I am lazy and a cheapskate when it comes to being a hobbyist. But once that wash is completely dry, I'm just going to use Gorthor Brown here and I'm going to do a quick dry brush on the edges of the bridges and on the flat open spaces of the wood. I'm not going to dry brush over the bones. I'm not dry brushing over the metal. I don't think that needs it. And this dry brush, using a pretty big brush, will complete this paint job. I really don't feel like I needed to do anything more to it. Of course, if you want to, you can lavish your terrain elements with a lot more detail than I'm doing here. But Rangers of Shadow Deep is incredibly terrain and miniature intensive. Every scenario seems to demand something new from me that I don't actually have at the time or something that I have been using that isn't painted at the time. And in order to showcase it on the channel, I want to use everything painted. So finding quick and easy ways to get things painted and get the different terrain elements that I require is important. But there we go. This is the last piece of the dry brush done and those are finished. We're now moving on to something completely different. One of the scenarios for Rangers of Shadow Deep requires rooms for a tower, and those rooms are 18 inches square. You can, of course, mark out the spaces with any terrain elements you have, like walls. You could draw them on paper. There are lots of different ways you can handle it. 
I actually wanted some map tiles. So what I have here are some self-adhesive decorative vinyl tiles, which I picked up in a Poundland. You get three tiles in a pack. And they're pretty ideal really, because they look like floorboards and they have this backing and then they're sticky underneath. And all I'm going to do with these is I'm going to mount them onto card and then I'm going to cut them into six inch squares and then I will seal the edges and the bottoms with PVA glue. And then I have six by six little rooms and I can use those for anything. I can use those for the interiors of buildings. I can make little corridors and maps with them. Or I can stick nine of them together and have 18 inch square rooms for Rangers of Shadow Deep. And a great thing about these tiles, apart from the fact that it's a pound for three, is you can actually write on them. I'm using a permanent black pen here and I'm just marking some stuff on there. You could draw grids on there if you want to play a game using one inch grids or if you want to mark some important elements, piles of treasure or whatever. And because I'm using a permanent pen, that's not going to wipe off easily. I'm just using a piece of kitchen roll here and you can see it's not going to come off. If I use a wet wipe, it starts to come off a little bit, but it's still pretty much clear on there but you can actually remove the lines when you are done it's really easy to do you just need to use a little magic pen you scribble over your permanent marker pen and then just use a piece of kitchen roll to wipe it off and you can see it comes off pretty easily the pen in question is just a dry wipe marker. It's a really neat little trick. You just scribble over whatever you've drawn, making sure you cover the whole thing, press pretty hard, and then you can wipe it off and it will pretty much come off. There may be a slight ghosting left behind and over time, if you keep doing it, the tiles may start to look a little bit grubby, but you can actually make a whole stack of these with just one pack of adhesive tiles. And like I mentioned before, I picked these up in a Poundland for a pound a pack. So even if you have to eventually throw them away, it's no great loss. But I think having a big wedge of those is going to be useful for Rangers of Shadow Deep, but also for when I finally get together with my game group and we play some more Dungeons and Dragons. But there we go, that's a quick recount of what I've been getting up to for creating new elements for Rangers of Shadow Deep. And obviously, there will be a new Rangers of Shadow Deep video on the channel at some point, hopefully in the not too distant future. There is, of course, lots of other exciting stuff going on. I have more Hero Quest painting videos to do, more Hero Quest restoration projects to do. I will shortly be posting a review of the Labyrinth Adventure game from River Horse Games. And I was also recently approached by a miniatures manufacturer to do a video which I'm pretty excited about. I don't want to say anything more about it right now, but hopefully relatively soon, I should have a really interesting video produced in conjunction with this particular miniatures manufacturer. So lots of good stuff coming and hopefully stuff that someone will find interesting. But I guess that's it from me for now. Thank you once again for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for all the support you give me and all the kind messages you leave in the comments. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.